Welcome to the castle everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42 and this is Character Vault where we go through the whole entire process of creating a character in various systems and today we are creating a character for Stars Without Number by Kevin Crawford. This is a science fiction role playing game kind of in the same vein as Traveler but a little bit different. This is more D20 based whereas Traveler is very much skill based, you know, rolling a lot of D6s and things like that. So uh, what are we going to need for this actual character creation? Well first we're definitely going to need some dice, D6s for our attributes and things like that. We'll need our character sheet on two pages. Um, let's take a look at the character sheet while we're here. So I see things like name, background, class. We do have levels in Stars Without Number, which is a big difference between this game and Traveler. We have homeworld, employer, species, a lot of different weapons that we can have, armor, all of our stat or skills are right here in the middle, and you can definitely tell there's a little bit more skills in Traveler than there are in Stars Without Numbers, and I'm actually fine with that. We have something called foci here in the very center, which I believe are kind of like feats a little bit. Credits, depths, here are our attributes on the far right side, as well as our hit points, system strain, and our saves as well. We have a spot for cybernetics and any psionics that we have. And on the second page, we have ooh, our backpack equipment, non-encumbering equipment. I like how they separated those two, because in a lot of system, it's usually like what one row is for normal items and then two rows for heavy items and things like that but then there's really nothing to do with the non-encumbering items, so hey, I like that they have a spot for that. Equipment and storage, any assets or properties that we own, and some note-taking things here. Any worthy achievements, any aliases or IDs, contacts and allies, languages known, and our current goals. So I think I'm gonna be using this first page a little bit more than I will be for that second page. And of course, we'll need our handy-dandy trusty pen, or pencil, because let's be honest, I make a lot of mistakes in these videos. And so that's all that we're going to need. So what exactly is going to go happen in this process for creating a character? There's actually quite a bit that actually does go into this process. Well, first we're gonna roll our six attributes and that's done by rolling 3d6 and then we'll assign them in order. I'm probably gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm probably gonna pick and choose, which is totally fine. Then we're going to mark down any attribute modifiers. We'll pick a background from the list on page 9 and gain the skills listed under that background name at level 0. We'll roll for skills three times on either the growth or the learning tables. And then we're going to choose our class. And there's only really three classes in Stars Without Numbers. We have the Warrior, the Expert, or the Psychic. There is the Adventure, which allows you to mid-max a little bit, so I could choose half of the Warrior, then half of the Expert, or half of the Warrior and half of the Psychic, things like that. Then we're going to choose our Foci, and the Foci are on page 20. Alternatively, we can choose an Alien Foci, and that's actually what we're going to do today, so I can show that off a little bit, and that's going to be on page 209. We're, then we're going to pick one non-Psychic skill, which is on page 8, We'll roll our maximum hit points, which is 6 plus a con mod. Warriors get to add 2 points to this total because they're, you know, sturdier than the rest. We're going to note any attack bonuses. Most characters get an attack bonus of 0, but the Warriors do get an attack bonus of 1. Then we'll choose our equipment packages, which are on page 25. Alternatively, we could roll 2d6 and multiply that by 100 for starting credits, but I'd rather just take the equipment package. We'll mark down our total hit points, or hit bonus, with our weaponry, which is equal to the base attack bonus, plus punch, stab, or shoot skills, plus any attribute modifiers. And the weapons are on page 66. If there are no levels in applicable skills, skills then we'll take a minus 2 penalty. We'll note the damage dealt by weapons. Again, weapons are on page 66. Then we'll record our armor class if we have any armor, which hopefully we will. Note down any beginning saving throw scores, so we have physical saves, evasion saves, and mental saves, and then we get to name our PC and give them a goal. That's a lot that's really going in through the process for creating a character, but it's not really that much compared to, you know, other games that kind of lump some of those processes together.
So for now, let's go ahead and roll our 3D6 for our attributes. Since I'm electing not to go straight down the attribute list, I am going to note all of my scores on this handy dandy index card, but it is going to be a 3D6 roll. Alternatively, if you really wanted to play a more heroic game, you could do the 46 and get rid of the lowest one, but I'm gonna do straight 3d6 so here we go first roll is 14 you see those two sixes we almost got a pretty good score there but actually 14 is pretty good anyways next up we have oh look at that even better we got a 17 you think we'll get lucky enough to get an 18 nope that's an 11 Ooh, that's a one, three, and an eight. Ooh, I didn't think we would get lower than a 11, but we did. Another eight. And for our very last roll, that's a nine. <laughs> so we got three pretty decent scores and then three not so decent scores. Now in the book, it does say that we can pick one attribute to change to a score of 14. And I'm actually probably not going to do that for here because on the one side, we do have a 14, a 17, and an 11. And I think three, score, three, great, three good scores is good enough. And then three subpar scores is also okay, considering that I'm making a shooter boy. So, yeah. So then it becomes... What do I to assign these skills to? Well, I and actually, you know what? I think I am going to go right down the center here. So strength is going to be 14. Dex is going to be 17. Con is going to be 11. Intelligence will be 8. Wisdom will be 8. And then maybe Charisma will be 9. I think that's pretty good. So really, we only have one score that is at, actually we have two scores that are at a plus one and everything else is at zero. So that's actually fairly decent. I am actually really glad about that. So we're gonna go ahead and write those here. And we'll also mark down any modifiers. So underneath attributes, it does say, uh, it does give out the modifier. So a three will get you a minus two modifier. A four to seven will get you a minus one modifier. 8 to 13 will be 0, 14 to 17 will be plus 1, and then 18 will be plus 2, and we almost got that plus 2. So maybe there will be something that will allow us to bump up a score by 1, and we can get that on our dexterity. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and mark down all of our attribute modifiers. I'm pretty glad, though, that we didn't really get a minus 1, so we were very close on a couple of those occasions, but... Oh well, we got that taken care of. Now let's go ahead and pick a background. The list of backgrounds begins on page 9, and there's actually 20 of them. So we have things like the Barbarian, born of a primitive world, the clergy, a consecrated man or woman, courtesan, trading on pleasurable company, the criminal, thief, rogue, liar, or worse, the dilettante, with money if not purpose, Entertainer, artful and beguiling. Merchant, whether peddler or far trader. Noble, by blood or by social capital. Official, a functionary of some greater state. Peasant, whether primitive or high tech. Physician, a healer of the sick and maimed. Pilot, or rider or sailor or vehicle driver. Politician, aspiring to leadership and control. Scholar, a scientist or academic. Soldier, whether mercenary or conscript. Spacer, dwelling in the deep space habs. Technician, artisan, engineer, or builder. A thug, ruffian, or strong arm of the people. The vagabond, roaming without a home. And the worker, a cube drone, or day laborer. So we will actually either choose one of these backgrounds or roll a d20 and we get what we get and we won't throw a fit. But I'm going to choose because I already have a plan in mind for this. Now, in addition... 
when we pick our background, we will actually gain the skills listed under the background name at level zero. And we're actually going to choose the soldier. So let's go on to find the soldier on page 14. Whatever the technology or structure of their parent world, the soldier's work is universal. Your hero was a professional fighter. Whether they took the form of a barbarian noble's thane, a faceless conscript in a planetary army, or an elite soldier in the service of a megacorp's private military. Whether it was because they were on the losing side, choosing to leave the service, or being forced to flee a cause they couldn't fight for, they now find themselves navigating a world where their most salable skill is one that can cause them a great deal of trouble. So for our background, we're going to go ahead and write soldier. Now, since we are a soldier, we do get any combat at level zero. And so let's take a look. Um, so our combat would be things like punch, shoot, stab. I believe those are the three ones. And I definitely want shoot. So we're going to take that at zero. I'm going to write that with my pencil because we're definitely going to change that. So that becomes level zero. Alternatively, if we did not want to roll to, on our growth or learning tables or pick, uh, we could just take the quick skills. So we would get any combat zero, exert zero, and survive zero. But I'm actually going to roll here. And so on page nine, it says, you can either pick two other skills from the learning table for your background or make three random rolls divided between the growth and learning tables. If you pick skills, you can select exactly the talents you want for your hero, while going with random rolls allows your character a little wider range of competence and the option of attribute improvements at the cost of perfect control over their development. If you pick skills, you may pick the same level or you may pick the same skill twice if you wish to improve its starting proficiency. So I will be rolling for that. So that means I get three rolls on the soldier side of things and it's just either a d6 or a d8 roll and i believe i do want to go ahead and start with a d6 because i do want one of those stat upgrades so one two or three or four is what i'm really looking for and i got a five wow so that means we get exert at level zero Question is, do I really want to sacrifice another roll on the growth table? And I think I do, because I really do want that, really want that, that stat increase. And I got a six, so any skill. So what we could do is put any skill at level zero. Um, there isn't any combat, so I could bump up shoot to one. And I think that's what I'm going to do, because we are a shooter boy after all. Oh boy, this eraser is horrible. So, we're going to bump that up to 1. Shoot is now 1. I Let's see, let's see, let's see. You know what? I'm going to go for that last growth. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, or 4. There we go. We got 4. So, plus 2 to any physical attribute. I could bump up strength. I am actually going to bump up dex to 19 to get that plus two, and this is why you don't write in pen, people. Next, we get to choose our class, and really there's only three classes. So we have the warrior, the expert, or the psychic. The adventure allows you to mix, and there are some rulings on that if you do decide to pick the adventure. And so you'll get partial psychic, partial warrior, and partial expert, and you'll choose two of those to be your class. As you could have probably guessed, we're going to be electing to choose the warrior. So whether a hive world thug, barbarian lost worlder, Gen-engineered combat hominid or a natural-born killer wasting their potential on a desk job, your hero has a real talent for inflicting mayhem. Stars Without Numbers is extremely dangerous, but your hero has talents to survive situations that would kill a less martial adventurer. We do have some class abilities, so every warrior PC has certain special abilities. You gain a free level in a combat-related focus associated with your background. The GM decides if a focus qualifies if it's an ambiguous case, which there's lots of these throughout this book, so be wary of that. 
Warriors are lucky in combat. Once per scene, as an instant ability, you can either choose to negate a successful attack roll against you, or turn a missed attack roll you made into a successful hit. You can use this ability after the dice are rolled, but it cannot be used against environmental damage effects without an attack roll, or hits on a vehicle you're occupying. And last but not least, you gain two extra maximum hit points at each character level, which is actually pretty ballin'. So of course we're gonna write our character class as warrior, and we're gonna start adding that stuff to our character sheet. So part of the being a warrior means that we do get a free level in a combat related focus. And I've elected to choose Die Hard. And Die Hard is right over here on page 21. So you are surprisingly hard to kill. You can survive injuries or bear up under stress, stresses that would incapacitate a less determined hero. You gain an extra two maximum hit points per level. This bonus applies retroactively if you take this focus after first level. You automatically stabilize if mortally wounded by anything smaller than a heavy weapon. So as a shooter boy, I think that would be pretty uh, nice to have. So now we get, I believe, four extra hit points per level. And speaking of, well, actually, I've already gone ahead and written Lucky Down, so yeah. So we gain two extra maximum hit points at each character level, so with Die Hard, that's gonna go up to four. So to get your starting maximum hit points, roll 1d6 plus two and add your constitution modifier to a minimum of one hit point. For our hit points, I'm wondering if that plus two is taking into account the fact that we gained the two max, extra maximum hit points um, for that class. So I think it's going to be 1d6 plus 4 plus my con mod, which is 0. So I'm still getting that 4. So let's go ahead and roll for that. What's our HP? It is 8 or 6. Ah, oh, boy. So our starting HP is 6. <laughs> Not really good right now. <laughs> but we'll bump that up with every level that we get because we'll get plus 4 every level. Next, we get to choose our foci. Now, foci begins on page 19, but the actual list begins on page 20. And you get to choose any one of these. Now, the thing about Stars Without Number is that it assumes that you're going to play as a human, kind of like how Traveler does. But you can actually play as an alien. And in order to do that, you'll actually go to page 209, which is a big gap here, and you're gonna choose one of the uh, foci for playing an alien character. So for example, um, we have things like aptitude for violence, environmental native, the init ability, natural defenses, origin skills, psychic aptitude, shape-shifting, strong attribute, tough, unusual movement mode, useful immunity, and that's actually it. Now, as a general rule, the GM should pick two of the following benefits to make up an alien's origin focus, or three if a couple of them are relatively minor perks. If the Vritak are proud warrior race of aliens, they might have both an aptitude for violence, for example, and an origin skill related to combat. And there's actually two that I'm actually interested in taking. First is the aptitude for violence. All members of this species are good at hunt hurting things. They gain a plus one bonus to their normal attack bonus. Thus, a first level alien expert would have an attack bonus of plus one instead of plus zero. And a first level warrior, which is what we are, would begin with a plus two bonus. So we're definitely going to take aptitude for violence. Another one that I'm interested in taking is tough. The alien is big or hardy or made of unusually durable biological components. Whenever they roll their hit dice to determine their maximum hit points, the first die they roll always counts as the maximum. Thus, a first level warrior alien would always start with, a, with 8 hit points. In our case, it would be 10. When rolling hit points at second level, they count their first die as 8 and roll on from there. Further hit dice that roll a 1 are re-rolled. So, we're gonna go ahead and add aptitude for violence and tough. We'll change our starting hit points so that we actually have 10 maximum hit points. And that plus one for our base attack bonus will be plus two. Next, we're going to choose an equipment package. 
So there is all sorts of different equipment packages to choose from and probably going to go with something that's actually, you know, based on our class. So there's Barbarian, Blade, Thief, Hacker, Gunslinger, Soldier, Scout, Medic, Civilian, and Technician. And since our background is Soldier, it would be definitely foolhardy of us not to choose that for our equipment package. So what do we get? We get a Combat Rifle, which deals 1d12 damage. We have Woven Body Armor, which gives us an AC of 15. A Knife, which deals 1d4 damage. We have 80 rounds of ammo, a backpack at tech level 0, so just a basic backpack basically, a compad, and 100 credits. So we're going to add that to our equipment, which is actually on the second page of the character sheet. So I've already gone ahead and notated all of our equipment, like our combat rifle and the knife. So the combat rifle has a range of 100 over 300, has an ammo count of 30, which deals 1d12. 12 damage, uh, I believe damage dealt by weapons is equal to the base damage dice plus attribute modifier. So that means I have 2 plus 2, so that's going to be 4 damage. So 1d12 plus 4 damage. That's actually pretty cool. And our knife is 1d4 plus, I'm using strength for this one, so 2 plus 1, which would be 3. So 1d4 plus 3 is not bad. Um, something else to note about the knife, it does deal one shock damage to AC 15 or lower, I believe. I think that's how shock works. I have to read up on that. But anyways, um, our base attack, or actually our bonus to hit, is equal to the base attack bonus plus punch, stab, or shoot skill plus attribute modifier. And so I have 2 plus 2, and our shoot is 1, so that's going to be plus 5 to hit. With our knife, it's going to be plus, I believe, since I'm using strength, just 1, so just plus 3. So, big of a difference there. Our woven body armor does give us an AC of 15, and that's just how it's going to go, unfortunately. So, hopefully, uh, we can get behind some cover and, you know, take some shots. But let's be honest, as a shooter boy, or thingy, we're probably just going to get right up into the thick of it. Since we don't have any levels in Knife, now that I remember it, we do get that minus two penalty. Next, we do need to write down our saving throws, and there's three of them here. We have physical, evasion, and mental. For our physical saving throw, it will be equal to 15 minus the best of either strength or con mod, and that's going to be plus one. So 15 minus one, which will be 14. I was taking a look at the character sheet, and it says something a little bit different than what's on my on my notes. It says 16 minus level, which is 15, minus strength or con mod. So there we go. For evasion, it will be 15 minus the best of either dexterity or intelligence. So that will be at 13. And for our mental saving throw, that will be 15 minus the best of either wisdom or charisma. So it's straight up 15 since those are both plus zero. And last but not least, we have to give our PC a name and give them some sort of a goal. And for our name, we are going to be Clark. With two A's and an exclamation point. And our goal is to shoot anything and everything that moves that does not compute as friend. So there we go. That is Clark, the shooter boy, soldier slash warrior, level one with 10 hit points, very tough, die hard, and all of that jazz. So feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series and subscribe if you would like to see more. And I will see you guys in the next video.